ABC Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Moments away from the kickoff of tonight's game between the Cowboys and the Panthers. Let's go down to the field and Lisa Guerrero. Lisa. Thanks, Al. Six of the 12 quarterbacks in this year's postseason are making their playoff debuts, including both of tonight's starting quarterbacks. I had an opportunity to sit down with Dallas's Quincy Carter to ask him what he relished most about this opportunity. I think as a quarterback, um, everybody wants to go down as a winner. And um, when you get in these situations and uh, you're playing in the playoffs, uh, you want to be known as a, a winner. And, uh, and, and that's where I want to stake my name at right now. So um, it's, it's, it's on the line right now, and this is the place where I want to be. Well, if Carter wants to be a winner tonight, he's going to have to reverse a recent trend of poor play away from home. As a matter of fact, the Cowboys have lost three of their last four games on the road. Carter's thrown eight picks as opposed to just three touchdowns. Now back to you. Well, Lisa, Bill Parcells is used to having a quarterback throw more interceptions than touchdowns and take them to postseason and a Super Bowl. It last happened after the 86 season when Phil Simms actually had more interceptions than touchdown passes and by the time that was done Simms was 22 of 25 in one of the great Super Bowl performances ever and the Lombardi Trophy was New York's. I was there and, and that was one of the great days for Bill Parcells for the New York Giants and for Phil Simms. So Bill Parcells who not that many years ago said I will never coach again or write it down but not that many people believed him and here he is back in the playoffs with John Casey an original Panther kicking off to Michael Bates who was a Panther for a number of years in fact as a run back specialist here he went to the Pro Bowl five times picked up by Dallas at the end of this season from the Jets and with flesh bulbs popping here we go from Charlotte as the ball is fielded at the 11 yard line and Bates who won a bronze medal in the 92 Barcelona Olympics in the 200 meter dash to the 30 and here's the Dallas offense. Quincy Carter Georgia Troy Hambrick Savannah Saint Richie Anderson Penn State Joey Galloway the Ohio State University Terry Glenn Ohio State Dan Campbell Texas A&M Lovelle Adams Michigan State Larry Allen Centennial Heights Matt Lair Virginia Tech Andre Gerard Colorado. Kurt Bowlers, Notre Dame. Larry Allen, Centennial High School, also Sonoma State, and the guy who figures to wind up in the Hall of Fame someday. First and ten from the 30-yard line. Carter, that short drop, quick flip. Jason Witten, rookie tight end, who's had a nice first season. Gain of six, second down and four. You know, sometimes you start a game and you just want to run it in there to, to kind of get everyone feeling good about themselves. And sometimes you want to do this, drop back, get your pass protection, get your quarterback off to a good start. And here's how he does it. I mean, I mean, he, had, he goes with two tight ends and he hits Jason Witten on that one. But that's not a bad start or a bad way to start Quincy Carter. Second and four and again to the outside quickly. And this time it's Terry Glenn reaching but can't get the first down. It'll be third and one stopped by Reggie Howard. Here's the Carolina defenders. Julius Peppers, University of North Carolina. Brinson Buckner, Clemson University. Chris Jenkins, University of Maryland. Mike Rucker, Nebraska. Greg Favors, MSU Bulldogs. Dan Morgan, Miami. Will Witherspoon, Georgia. Ricky Manning, UCLA. Mike Minter, Nebraska. Dion Grant, University of Tennessee. Reggie Howard, University of Memphis. That defensive line is very tough. Chris Jenkins, number 77, will be going to the Pro Bowl. Third and one, it's the play fake, and then the pass is caught for a first down to Jason Witten. So, John, they come out anything but arch conservative. Yeah, and, and the, the thing is, they caught Carolina, and they had eight in the box. They were up there for short yardage, so they get a great play fake. And then Quincy Carter comes out of the play fake and hits his guy wide open. Now, now, now watch the key here is a play fake right there. You see what that does to the defense? It holds the pass rush. It brings everyone up, and it, and it lets Quincy Carter get the ball out there. See the fake? See how it holds that defense? And then he has his guy wide open for a first down. So Carter begins the game with three passes. He's three for three for 12 yards. Terry Glenn is the man in motion, going all the way across the field. And Carter's fourth pass of the night is incomplete. 
So his first missed attempt, Jason Witten, the intended receiver, covered by Mike Minter, second down. You know, it's interesting, and you know, we we're saying how Bill Parcells said we have to come out in an attack mode, and I agree with that. I mean, there's you can't get to the playoffs and then go conservative. And I think that if you go conservative, if you just run, this defense of Carolina is just too good and they're just going to bunch up on you. So what he's trying to do is loosen up this defense now so maybe he can get some running later. Second and ten. Richie Anderson in the backfield. Anderson was their leading receiver this season. And to the backside, it's juggled and dropped by Anderson. Pass a little high and behind him, but Richie, who played for Parcells in New York has come over and has been a very valuable commodity. And I'll tell you, this would have been a great play, Al, because they were coming from a blitz on the side of the screen. This is what you look for. Look, here comes the blitz. Here goes Richie Anderson. He's out here. If he gets that ball, look, all the blitzes are up there. He is wide open down the sideline. That would have been a big, big play for the Cowboys. Well designed, poorly executed. Third down and ten, two minutes into the game. 70,000 towels pinwheeling. And the pass is caught. But since Antonio Bryant had to reach down, he could only get it up to the 46 yard line. And Dallas is forced to putt. And that's one of the things with Qu Quincy Carter. He doesn't have great accuracy. And if you run a crossing pattern like that on third down and you're going to throw underneath the first down marker, you have to get it out there where your guy can catch it and continue to run. Toby so going to punt. Steve Smith, who's a wide out and a great kick returner, ran the first punt of the game in New York back for a touchdown last week. Short kick. That is down at the 21 yard line. 32 yard boot, and the Carolina Panthers take over for the first time with 1227 to go in the opening quarter. Steven Davis and the offense coming out for the Panthers. This wild card game is being brought to you by Bud Light with a great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. Make it a Bud Light. Microsoft, your potential, our passion. And McDonald's. Tonight's aerial coverage provided by Bud Light. As you look down into Erickson Stadium. Constructed in the 90s, this team came into the National Football League in 95. Stadium right on the edge of downtown. And now from the 22-yard line, Stephen Davis, the former Redskin, picks up four. Let's take a look at the Carolina offense. Jake DeLome, UL Lafayette. Stephen Davis, Auburn University. Brad Hoover, Western Carolina. Steve Smith, Utah. Musa Muhammad, Michigan State. Chris Mangum, Ole Miss. Todd Stucy, Cal Berkeley. Geno James, Auburn. Jeff Mitchell, Florida. Kevin Donnelly, North Carolina. Jordan Gross, University of Utah. Jordan Gross, a rookie, has started all season. He was their number one pick out of Utah. And now Davis has made such a big difference this year. Up to the 29, third and three. Here's the Dallas D. Greg Ellis, UNC. Willie Blade, Mississippi State. Leroy Glover, San Diego State. Ebenezer Echobine, North Carolina. Al Singleton, Temple. Dad Wynn, Texas A&M. Dexter Copley, Appalachian State. Terrence Newman, Kansas State. Darren Woodson, Arizona State. Roy Williams, Oklahoma. Mario Edwards, Florida State. Two great safeties, the veteran Woodson in his 16th postseason game. And Roy Williams, second year out of Oklahoma. On third down and three, DeLong throws to the outside. Caught by Smith. Inside move to spring free into Cowboy territory. Being chased to the end zone and is knocked down just short of the end zone. Pete Hunter able to save the touchdown. But it's 70 yards. And what a move on the sideline to turn it back inside by Steve Smith. Yeah, and when you have a guy like Steve Smith that is so explosive, all you have to do is get him the ball out there, and you're going to see Terrace Newman is right up on him. He misses a tackle right there. Roy Williams comes across. He misses a tackle. And once you miss two tackles on Steve Smith, he is going to take it all away. That's a third missed tackle. That guy can move. You miss there, you miss there, and this guy is a racehorse. 
His longest play of the year, 67 yards. He's their leading receiver, and it's first down and goal from the one. And the Cowboys bunch up Davis just short of the line of scrimmage. I know you, you know you talk about things that kill coaches, and that's a play. I mean, that they had the coverage right there. They had tight coverage on him, and they had him double covered. And I know that's what Bill Parcells thinking. We had the perfect defense for that play, and the guy catches the ball. We missed two tackles, and it becomes a long play when it should have been a play that was nothing. It was a third and three, and he ran away from the rookie Terrence Newman, and Hunter was only able to get him because he had the angle on him. Second down and goal from the one and a half. And DeLong's going to throw a fade into the corner of the end zone, and that's incomplete, intended for Musin Mohammed. So third down and goal. And they got the, the safety, Darren Woodson, who normally covers tight ends, is out here in Mohammed. So that's a, a, a pretty good matchup for Carolina, and it's just outside Mohammed's fingertips. He runs a pretty good pattern. He got him in and he gave DeLone pretty pretty much room to throw that. And that was just a poor throw. I mean, that was Jake DeLone's fault. Every time the Panthers have been on the one yard line this year, they have scored a touchdown, mainly because of Stephen Davis, 48. And they give it to him. And Davis is going to get bunched up short of the goal line. So a tremendous goal line stand for Dallas. And now for John Fox on fourth down and goal with Williams and Ellis. Providing the impetus for the stop. Do you go for three? Do you go for seven? He sends the field goal unit in. Yep, he's already made that decision. Watch Al Singleton. He's number 51. He's going to do a good job right here of taking on the tight end. That's what you have to do is take on the tight end, hold that position, hold the hole right there, and then just push him off and get to the inside and get the stop. And then gang tackle him. And that's one thing about this Cowboy defense. They have great, great pursuit. The left footer John Casey 18 yard field goal and so the Panthers had first and goal at the one small win there for Dallas because Carolina held to three Panthers take the early lead 840 to go in the period. The nickelback Pete Hunter where did he come from on that touchdown saving tackle. You know, it's interesting here he is Al. he's way on the other side he's on the side down here the play to Steve Smith is all the way across the field now watch that's why you say you know a play is never over you're never out of it Pete Hunter comes all the way across the field and saves a touchdown for the Dallas Cowboys four point play now at the 22 the Cowboys have run six plays all passes and now the first run is Hambrick. Up to the 25-yard line, Hambrick taking over for the departed Emmett Smith. What about the Cowboys' season now? September 15th versus the Giants, a Monday night game after they had lost on opening day to Atlanta. Behind in the last 11 seconds and won the game. They ran the most plays in the NFL this season and were fourth in time of possession. And they had the number one defense in the National Football League. So some very impressive statistics, and of course, Parcells through the years has loved to play what he calls clock war. Eat the clock. Incomplete here, intended for Terry Glenn. You know, and that's a that's a pretty good blueprint for success. You know, is 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 time of possession. That means ball control on offense, and then the number one defense in football. But I'll tell you one thing. It's tough. They 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 don't have a great running back. I mean, the Dallas Cowboys need a better running back, and and they have a quarterback that doesn't have a lot of accuracy. And those those things are tough because he's had like three or four things open so far in this game. Quincy Carter has, and he's missed them. Yeah, their primary back is Hambrick, 972 yards. But Parcells telling us last night, my best runner is Richie Anderson, third down and seven, and that is almost picked off. Chris Jenkins, who knocks down a lot of balls at the line of scrimmage, and the guy who will be going to the Pro Bowl for the second time in his three-year career makes it fourth down and seven. You're going to see a blitz coming here. You see the pressure coming right here from this side over here. Quincy Carter starts to feel it, so he has to get rid of the ball right there, and he almost threw it right to Chris Jenkins. Three and out for Dallas with Toby going to kick. And Steve Smith, who had that 70-yard reception, is back to receive. 
fielded at the 34 by Smith. Can't get blocking. Brings it back to the 37. Tackled there by Jeff Robinson. DeLome on the offense coming back out almost halfway through the first quarter. Carolina three, Dallas nothing. Tomorrow night, you'll see the Nokia Sugar Bowl from New Orleans. The Heisman Trophy winner, Jason White, leading number one Oklahoma against number two LSU for the BCS National Championship. SC doing its part, of course, in the Rose Bowl the other day on top of the other polls. But it's Oklahoma and LSU to wrap up college football 2003 slash 04 tomorrow night. Now DeLong from the 38 yard line on the roll throws it to the right side where it's caught by Ricky Pro who makes the catch there. Ricky Pro played his college football at Wake Forest in the state 14th year in the league and a guy who made a big 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 catch for the St. Louis Rams against Tampa in the NFC Championship game in 99. Doesn't it seem like over his career that Ricky Pro has made a lot of big big catches because He's usually a third down receiver. You know that third receiver you put in on third down. And he, and he always seems to make big plays, big first downs when you need him, and as you said, touchdown. But has never been to the Pro Bowl as Davis gets the first down. And it's one of those crazy things, John, where Ricky Pro has now been around long enough that he's caught more passes than Fred Bolitnikov. Meanwhile, big early comeback on opening day against the Jaguars. They were down 17-0. DeLong came in to replace Rodney Pete and never gave up the ball for the rest of the season. Stephen Davis had a team record for rushing and a career high as well and after he escapes Washington and then seven and zero oh were the Panthers in games decided by three or fewer points which is amazing. They did however lose an overtime game by six to Atlanta on a touchdown and that pass is low but caught pulled in by Jermaine Wiggins for a gain of five and for DeLong John and we're seeing this story so many times now you know a guy is undrafted hangs around backup quarterback sometimes number three goes to Europe barely plays and then all of a sudden starting well in fact he went to Europe that one year he went to Amsterdam and he wasn't even a starting quarterback the starting quarterback on that team was Kurt Warner. He said he called home and, and, and told his parents, he said, you know, I don't think there's any way I can play in the NFL. I can't even make NFL Europe as a starter. He backed up Warner at Amsterdam, then went to Frankfurt and won the NFL Europe title there. And Brad Hoover, the fullback out of West Carolina, fourth-year man, picks up about a yard, setting up a third down and long three. You know, one of the guys on this on this Dallas defense who's been something special for Bill Parcells is a middle linebacker right here, Dat Win. You know, when, when Bill Parcells first came here, he said, you know, he didn't like little linebackers. He didn't think there was any way Dat Win could play. So Dat Win had to prove that he could play. And Bill Parcells said last night, he told us, he said, this guy has really earned my respect. He's one guy that I would never get rid of. 5'11, 243. Davis gets chased and taken down by Woodson. So the safety, Darren Woodson, in his 12th year, looks like a rookie on that play. Follows him to the outside, catches him from behind. You know, and Darren Woodson, of course, is a safety that can play like a linebacker, and so is Roy Williams. And you're going to see he's up in here. He's up in the in the gap right here. And you see he's playing like a linebacker position, and then he just blitzes. And the big thing to Stephen Davis that the Cowboys figure is to get him before he gets started. I said, looking like a rookie, looking like a rookie speed on that play. Todd Sauerbrunn's kick will go into the end zone. So 44 gross, but only 24 net. And with 414 to play in the first quarter, it remains 3-0 Carolina. Four fourteen remaining in the first quarter. Carolina trying to win a trip to St. Louis. Dallas trying to win a trip to Philadelphia. 3-0. Panthers on top at a great goal line stand by Dallas. Instead of a touchdown, they limited the Panthers to a field goal. And this is 
Hambrick taken down for a two yard loss. It'll be second down and 12. Yeah, and this is going to be tough running against this defense because if you say who has the best defensive line in the playoffs, I think it's this team, the Carolina Panthers. And we're talking to John Fox the other day when he came in there, he had to make a decision. How should we build this team? And he decided it would be that guy, number 90, Julius Pepper. They had the second uh, second pick in the first round, and, and he was their choice. And he was he's the building block. That's how they wanted to build this defense. Fox said he was very nervous. He said, you don't want to blow the second choice in the draft. And Carter gets hit from behind by Greg Favors, the outside linebacker who got an arm on Carter's arm as he released. And Quincy is now four of nine for 16 yards. You know, the Carolina Panthers felt that the last time they played that, that they didn't put enough pressure on Quincy Carter. And, and, and they let him get comfortable and they let him dink and dunk and pick and stuff like that. And they said, this is going to be different. We're not going to play him like that. We're going to go after him. We're going to make him uncomfortable. And so far, they've been doing it. Well, he was three of his first three, and now he's one of his last six. From the 18-yard line on third down and 12. Pressure. Carter gets whacked, and he's lucky he didn't fumble. Reggie Howard came in from the corner from the blind side, and it was all Carter could do to cover up the football. Yep, and that's exactly what they didn't do last time and what they're going to do tonight. Reggie Howard, number 23, the right corner. You're going to see him come from the backside. Here he is right there, unblocked. You see Quincy Carter is looking to his right, doesn't see nor feel Reggie Howard. That's the fourth time that they've blitzed the Cowboys tonight. So that's a little different from the last time they played. They figured tonight they have to pressure him. Toby going kicking out of his end zone, and it's a short kick that bounces at the 36. Takes a minimally favorable bounce for him. And it's down to the 41 yard line. And so Carolina will have a very short field. Jerry Richardson, the owner of the team, the founder of the team, and the driving force behind the expansion franchise being granted here. We have a penalty on the play. Walt 56 Coleman. of the kicking team. That penalty's declined. Goes down. That's Brady James. When the NFL decided to expand in 1995, and of course the process went on for a few years, of all towns, you figure, well, Baltimore needed a team, and St. Louis was going to get a team, but it wound up Charlotte and Jacksonville, and that's the reason it wound up in Charlotte. That man right there got the team, did all of the grunt work, the due diligence, and got the stadium built. You know, and, and he's the second man in the history of football since George Hallis that played in the league and later owned the team. One of Johnny Unitas's favorite targets. Intended for Hoover. How good was Jerry Richardson? Well, there he was as a Colt. 13th round pick in 58. That, of course, was the year of the, the game for the ages, the overtime game between the Colts and the Giants, the championship. Jerry Richardson on the other end of a pass from number 19. And look at him now. I played in an all-star game with him. He and I roomed together. And when I first met him, he said, he's for Waffle College. And I said, what? I said, there's no college at Waffle. I said, that's not even a word from Waffle. W-O-F-F-O-R-D is the one just throws it away into the Cowboy bench. I couldn't understand them. <laughs> I said, I'm from Waffle. I said, I, I've never heard of Waffle. <laughs> anyway, it was Wofford College, and then he went on to become Jerry Richardson, and then and then he took some money. It was, I think they got $3,500 for that playoff, and Carol Rosenblum was the owner of the Colts at the time, and he encouraged his guys to invest, and Jerry started to invest in, in food franchises and went on from there. Owns the team right now, a, a pillar of the community here in Charlotte and through the Carolinas. Third down and 10 now at the 41 yard line. Ricky Cole is the man in motion. Cowboys nearly jump. Flags are thrown. Free play coming up. Clock first down. Hussein Mohammed at the 25 yard line. So they got Dallas to jump. And the flag gave them a free play. Yeah, and that's what they like about Hussein Mohammed. Al, as you said, he jumps. He's a very physical guy. One of the best blocking wide receivers in football. Stephen Davis says, anytime I get a big Offside. run, he'll get me a block. Penalty declined. Players open up. First down. 
And Jake Galone was talking about plays just like this. And he said he feels so comfortable with Masin Muhammad that if it's close like this, he can just throw it out. And because he is so big and physical and strong, he's going to come down. He's going to make the play for you. Muhammad and John Casey, the only Panthers still remaining from the team that went to the playoffs and beat Dallas here in 96. Davis gets tripped up by Roy Williams at the line of scrimmage and to this point in the game the Panthers have outgained the Cowboys 109 yards to eight. Yeah, I think the thing that they did is we were talking about how you have to be able to run to get them up and then pass and you also have to be able to pass to loosen them up to run and I think that's what the Panthers have done. I mean they got that big play to Steve Smith. I think that loosened the Cowboy defense up a little and then they were able to get a little more running with Stephen Davis and they weren't deflated by the fact that they had a first and goal after the 70 yard reception had to settle for three second down and ten. DeLong to the near side goes to Hoover. There's another missed tackle as he broke away from Copley and the crowd chanting Hoover picks up seven. Mike Zimmer the defensive coordinator of Dallas he's one of the few guys inherited by Parcells. Bill takes the job looked around but Jerry Jones said you got to look at this guy just talk to Mike Zimmer and Parcells telling us last night he loves this guy. He said he's a real deal. He said the way he communicates with his players he reminds Bill of Bill Belichick. He says he's a lot like Bill Belichick and that's pretty dug <laughs> I'll say third down and three from the 20. DeLong to the end zone with double coverage and no flag. Musin Muhammad got blanketed there and bracketed with Darren Woodson on one side and Terrence Newman on the other. And so with 107 to play. It will be about a 38 yard field goal attempt. See, and sometimes because you have so much confidence in a guy being physical like Muhammad is, that, that you will throw that ball into double coverage to him. John Casey, 13th year in the league, played his college football at Georgia. 38 yard attempt. And Casey is two for two. So we have 62 seconds remaining in the first quarter in this NFC wild card game in Charlotte, where Carolina now leads six to nothing. And let's check in with Lisa Guerrero. Lisa. Thanks very much, Al. Well, Panthers right guard Kevin Donnelly was very much looking forward to the spotlight of tonight's game. Not for himself, not for his teammates, but for a 12 year old girl by the name of Hope Stout. He met her earlier this season. She's been battling a rare form of bone cancer and has become an inspiration to him. Here's an example of her selflessness. When the Make a Wish Foundation asked her what she would like granted, she said she wanted the wishes granted of the other 155 children battling life threatening illnesses in this region. The cost? About $1 million. Donnelly wants to help. Help her raise it. So far, they've raised about $400,000. For information on how you can help, you can contact the Carolina Panthers. Al? All right, thank you, Lisa. Kevin, a real good guy. He's been around now for a long time. Picked by the Oilers in the 91 draft and moved with them to Tennessee, then with Miami. And now one of the pillars along the offensive front here for Carolina. Michael Bates to run the kickback. And Bates brings it up to the 32 yard line. So 57 seconds remaining. Who would have ever thought when the season began we'd be doing Carolina and Dallas in the playoffs? No one. You know, you know I thought that when, when Bill Parcells went there that they were going to start to get better and maybe next year or the year after that. But I, I, had, I had no feeling that, that they would be here. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the Bill Parcells thing, of course, is, is there are so many little angles to come in from and all of that. And, did you did you ever think when he said write it down I'll never coach again four years ago did you believe him. No I didn't because I know Bill Parcells and, and he can't live with it and he can't live without it. Good way to put it. Joey Galloway breaks free and Galloway into Carolina territory out of bounds at the 25 yard line. Dion Grant forces him out and Joey Galloway trying to get Dallas 
moving again by far their biggest play of the night. Joey Galloway did the same thing earlier that Steve Smith did and watch here's Ricky Manning. He's he's off him. He comes up. He misses the tackles. Just that little quick pass out there. That little hitch pass. You hit him out there. You got your speed guy. If you miss a tackle, it could be a big play. If you get your corners up and you get them tackling, then it's nothing. But but look who is chasing him and running him out of bounds right there is Julius Peppers, the defensive end. In at the end of the play, 25 seconds left. In the opening quarter, Carter protected well this time, throws into traffic. Hamburg makes the catch for a short gain in what should be the final play of the period. So the teams will switch ends of the field. Two field goals by John Casey providing the scoring. And that is the end of the first quarter in this wild card game with the score Carolina six, Dallas nothing. And Wild Card Saturday resumes after this message and a word from our ABC station. Back to Charlotte, Al Michaels, John Madden, and Lisa Guerrero as we go to the second quarter. Two field goals by John Casey, Carolina leading Dallas six to nothing. Second down and seven now for the Dallas Cowboys at the Panther 36 yard line. And a big hole this time for Hambrick. And the running game gets on track as Hambrick takes the ball down to the 20-yard line. Until then, he had carried twice for one net yard. That's 16 yards here. Well, they get behind Flo Zell Adams and Larry Allen. That's not a bad thing to do. That's where their blitzes have come from. When you have Flo Zell Adams here and, and Larry Allen there, you're going to get some movement there. And if you get movement there, then you're going to have a pretty big hole. Just turn them out, turn them out, turn them out, and look at that hole to run in. Of course, I think they've been playing Quincy Carter. They've been playing pass. All their blitzes have come from that side when they've been trying to put pressure on Quincy Carter. Only a three-man rush, and that's enough to knock the pass down at the line of scrimmage, something that the Panthers have been very proficient at. And they're going to rule this... The rule, there's a rumble. There's a yeah. rumble going on down there. The pass was knocked down by Brenson Buckner, who may have contended that they were able to come up with the ball on the fly, but no search as Will Coleman. Here's the knockdown. I think Buckner just knocked the ball down, and then the play was over, and they just kept blocking him and stuff. The Panthers deflected or knocked down 26 passes this season, number one in the National Football League in that category. The biggest guy is Chris Jenkins because he gets so much push in the middle. And he blocks kicks too, but Anderson then coughs the ball up at the 11 yard line, and Carolina has it. Mike Minter, the safety, recovers it. I'll tell you one thing when we have in this game is some big hitting safeties. Yeah, we talked about the other sides, but Mike Minner is one of those too. He comes up with it. It looks like Richie Anderson just fumbled the ball as he was going down. Will Witherspoon had him, but Anderson just coughs it up. A minute into the second quarter, Panthers have it back. While in commercial, Bill Parcells threw the flag to challenge the ruling on the last play, but I can't see how he wins this. I don't see any overturn. Watch the ball begin to come out before the left knee hits right there. And it's pretty clear the knee isn't even down. The ball is coming out, but Parcells taking a chance on a challenge here, which uh, 99 times out of 100, the way we look at it here, he's going to lose. And I think he's doing exactly what you said. He's taking a chance because uh, there's no way that's not a fumble. On the field of a fumble. The ball came prior to the runner's knee being down. It is a fumble. Dallas will be charged for first team timeout. Parcells had been pretty successful challenging calls this season. He was three of five in challenges, and only Parcells and his opposite number tonight, John Fox, batted better than 500 on challenges this year. Fox was nine out of a, or seven out of 11. John Fox says that, that he's taken a couple of those when he when he felt that he needed a long timeout for his for his defense. He's done it. 
And he's won them too. <laughs> it's it's the not he was going to win. <laughs> Rod Carey's been won, just won for a long time out. A first and ten now. Stephen Davis for a 22 yard gallop up to the 33 yard line, and Darren Woodson knocks him out of bounds. Yeah, the Cowboys have what they call run blitzes. You know, you, you have pass blitzes and you have run blitzes. That time the Cowboys came on a run blitz, and Stephen Davis is just going to gash him. Watch this. They're going to get the pressure coming right here. Now, now, one thing about a run blitz, if you pick it up and you get by that level right there, you have about 10 more yards. Stephen Davis, just watch the way he runs. I mean, he has you know, power down low, and he has great vision. From the 34-yard line. And again, it's Davis. Up to the 38-yard line. Richie Anderson, meanwhile, handled the ball 139 times with only one fumble this season, but a costly one here. The numbers to this point in the game. Turnovers, which of course are hugely important in the regular season, are of even more importance in postseason play. I mean, the numbers are staggering in postseason play in the modern era when you win the turnover battle. Second down and six. And Davis now up to the 41 yard line coaches are always saying we can't turn the ball over I mean it's the one thing it's the one statistic that's more important I think than any other and there it is since 1990 in the regular season the regular season percentage is 785 in postseason 856 right and it's probably more true now than ever because of the of parity you know there's no dominant team so when you had dominant teams you, you could do anything I mean, you could have penalties you could have turnovers and still beat the other team because you were that much better now it's a very fine line between the good the average and the bad in effect you win the turnover battle five times in every six games you win the game and that's knocked down at the line of scrimmage by Ebenezer Ekelbon. You know the other stat I thought that was interesting is one of the reasons that the Panthers are able to run now is because so far they have over a hundred yards of passing and I think that that has somewhat loosened up this Cowboy defense it, the Cowboy defense is not dominating nor dictating this game Todd Sauerbrunn nine years in the league now out of West Virginia started his career with the Bears and this is Todd's first postseason game not counting the Pro Bowl he's a regular there. Bouncing ball at the 25 yard line, Joey Galloway. He's out of bounds at about that spot. They'll mark it at the 25 with 12.03 to go in the opening half in Charlotte, where Carolina leads Dallas 6 0. Downtown Charlotte, great banking center here in. North Carolina and in the foreground Erickson Stadium. Charlotte comes back into the NBA. Meanwhile, next year, Robert Johnson buying the team. And they'll be known as the Bobcats. The old Hornets, of course, moved to New Orleans. From the 25 yard line, first down. Carter chased. And then the catch is made along the sideline. Six yard gain for. Terry Glenn Quincy Carter played three years of college football at Georgia he was also a great baseball player good enough to be picked in the second round by the Chicago Cubs in 96 then he was picked in the second round in the 2001 draft Dave Campo was the head coach he's the sixth Cowboys rookie quarterback to start a game and there's his mark overall but he was clearly Jerry Jones is picking that draft from the 31 yard line. It's Hambrick picking up about a yard and a half, third and short. And, you know, John, when Parcells comes in, he inherits him, and he's got Chad Hutchinson, and they have to think about do we go to the free agent market? In fact, they offered Jake DeLoma a contract in Dallas. Right, and, and all he offered Quincy Carter was a chance to come in and compete, and, and Quincy Carter said, That's all I wanted, but he was the first guy, Bill Parcells was, that told him how to be a professional. And what he had to do, and how he had to prepare to make the run, and that was his biggest change. Wearing Don Meredith's old number, Richie Anderson to the outside. Can he turn the corner? He cannot. Witherspoon comes up to make the tackle, and Howard helps to finish him off. Fourth down. 
Now that's one of the problems when you when you pull a 350 pound tackle to be your lead the back has to wait a little for that 350 pounds to get moving to make something happen. Flozell Adams didn't make the block and there was nothing Anderson could do. Toby going ready to punt for the fourth time tonight. Dangerous Steve Smith back to return it and again it's another short and wobbly kick very short very wobbly and very ugly as well because that one will come back almost to the 50 yard line they'll spot it at the Carolina 49 a 17 yard kick you're right that's downright ugly yeah. I'm Jake DeLome, and this is my Saturday night. Jake DeLome came in on opening day. They were trailing 14 0 at the hand. He gets into the game at 17 0. Jacksonville wins the game and never looks back. I did the first game that he ever started and it was for the New Orleans Saints against the Dallas Cowboys and he beat them in New Orleans. He didn't make very many starts in New Orleans mainly on the bench for six years as Chris Mangum is taken down to the line of scrimmage but he had a good day that day too. Oh, He had a great day. I mean you know he, he, he came in and, and no one knew how to pronounce his name. It was <laughs> Dehome, Delahome, Delahome you know and all those things. And, and here he is and he threw two touchdown passes. He ran for another touchdown and beat the Cowboys and we're going to the playoffs that year. So it wasn't a bad Cowboy team. Then he went right back on the bench and backed up Aaron Brooks second down and ten from the forty nine yard line. Davis. Well, here's John Fox and his thoughts about his quarterback. I think leadership comes to mind. He has a great passion. He's contagious. Uh, he has what I call it in a player. And sometimes it's hard to put into words, but Jake has that unique ability to lead and make people believe. He's got it. Yeah, and, and it's pretty good. Uh, Dan Henning, the offensive coordinator, called it pizzazz. He said our offense needed some pizzazz, and he said that's what Jake Gallone brings to you. You know, the passion, the fight, the life, all those kind of things that kind of probably equal it. Yeah, it is seven game-winning drives in the fourth quarter or overtime. More than, let's say, guys like Montana ever had in the season, the Marino. And a flag comes in on the underthrown ball intended for Steve Smith. Mario Edwards with the coverage and Parcells is going to say not catchable. I tell you Jake DeLome just slung that one. Is it slung or sling? I believe it's slung. <laughs> anyway he just slung it and as you say it was short and, and, and maybe it was uncatchable but if there's going to be a pass interference it's going to be on Mario Edwards. Well he's going both ways on this he signaled he signaled. He signaled interference on both guys. On offense. 27. Defense. Those penalties all set. Repeat third down. It seems like anytime you see Mario Edwards, that's the thing to do is throw on him because you're going to get a pass interference or he's going to get a pass interference. I don't know that that's not a pass interference. Well, he called it both ways. Smith made the initial contact and Edwards held him up. It's like one of those calls in hockey where you don't know which way to call it. You call and, it on both guys. And then and then it, it probably the third way could have been no call because it couldn't have been caught anyway. Right. So I mean probably the way it ended up is the right thing. Back once we started third and eight to Sean Foster in the game replacing Stephen Davis and the pass is caught on a slant by Steve Smith for a first down. At the 34-yard line, tackled by Terrence Newman, 15 yards on the reception. Yep, and they caught the Cowboys in a blitz, and they're working on Terrence Newman because he has no help. I mean, once you get inside, if you have a blitz, then then once you get inside on a slant, there's no help there. So you just get that ball in the way, and you start to run away from everything. See, there can't be a linebacker in there to help you because the linebackers are blitzing. 
So he has a wide open pass and a wide open lane. They have Davis back in the game now. As the soul set back, play fake, throw underneath, intended for Davis in traffic, second down and ten. You see that wristband that Jake DeLome has? This this is impossible for me now. It'd be impossible for, for me to read. But on his left wrist, he has all the plays. He has 150 plays on that on that wristband. Here's here's a copy of it right there. So that would be about what 38 and four columns. It'd be 38, 38 here, 38 here, 38, 38 here. I have no idea how you see those plays, but they just call in a number, and he has to look down at that play and make that play call in the huddle. This guy could obviously read the bottom of any eye chart. The long throws, and it's caught for a first down by Steve Smith, who gets spun down by Terrence Newman, the number one draft choice out of Kansas State. I tell you, Jake DeLome is starting to look like he belongs in this game. I mean, he, he is starting to feel very comfortable, and with that comfort, you know, it's coming a lot of confidence. And you just see here, just Steve Smith, Justin, he, he just turns around Terrence Newman. I mean, he just gets him going up, like, because... What you worry about is him going deep, so he just stops and comes back. But again, it all starts here. Good protection. Make a good, solid pocket so that he can step up and make that throw. Panthers trying to take advantage, starting on a short field after the 17-yard punt. Davis to the outside. And you wonder if Steve Spurrier would still be in Washington if Steven Davis had been more a part of the offense in Washington last year and it stayed this season if he just would have used him yeah and said okay let's let's make that part of the deal part of the, the thing that, that helps you pass the ball is a running game because that's what is going on right here is the Cowboys blitz and then and then and then they can get the passing game going and then if they want to back off for the pass and they can get Stephen Davis in the running game going Davis has been bothered in the second half of the season by an ankle injury that had to spot him Missed the game down the stretch. Second down and ten. The long throw into the outside, and Davis dropping that. And Davis is the kind of back who rarely has a pass thrown to him. He's had a couple here on this drive, but through the season, Davis, who played in 14 games, caught only 14 balls, and that's a very small number for a primary running back. Yeah, and that's what he is. I mean, he's a primary running back. He's not a pass receiving running back, but I'll tell you, he's a tough guy. I asked him the other day. I said, "How's your ankle?" He said it's not my ankle. He said it's both ankles and my knee. And I think when you get into the you know 17th game of a season, you know every running back who is a workhorse like Stephen Davis is going to have multiple injuries. There was plenty of company. Third down and ten at the 23-yard line, and DeLome is going to take a timeout. Play clock was all the way down. Timeout, Carolina with 6:17 to go in the half. Panthers six, Cowboys nothing. Back in Charlotte, the Dallas defense, number one in passing yards allowed per game. And the opponents completed less than 50% tops there. Third defensively against the pass and pass rating. And of course, number one overall defensively. And DeLong, who completed only nine balls in the first meeting between these two teams this year, nine of 24, is already eight of 15. Now third and ten from the 23 yard line and they're going to keep it on the ground and Davis is going to spin to the outside and go in for the touchdown. Mario Edwards the last guy to have a chance fell down on the play 23 yards on the ground on third and ten. the second time the Panthers have got a big run on third and long the Cowboys playing pass and the Panthers just gash him. Casey for the point after Davis with the game's first touchdown they took a timeout with the clock going down to zero call a run on third and ten and come up with seven a 17 yard punt put him in position at midfield to march in for the score yeah it's a double lead you're going to see the tight end here and the fullback they're going to lead you see they start here now they come right back here you got a lead there and a lead there 
And Stephen Davis just gets right behind them. I tell you, he has great vision. And we talked about that. And he said that he just trusts his instincts. He said that he realizes over the years that the first thing he sees and the first cut that he makes is always the right one. See now there's a block right there the wham block the lead block there the vision the cutting off those blocks the wham block is when that H back or tight end comes in and traps a defensive lineman the lead block is a fullback leading on a linebacker the run you know what that is <laughs> so the Cowboys find themselves down 13 to nothing and Casey to kick off. Mike Zimmer, the defensive coordinator, looking at the pictures, and the ball is sent down into the direction of Bates. And Michael Bates, the former Panther, can bring it back to the 22 yard line. With six minutes, three seconds remaining in the opening half. The Cowboys winless this year in five games when trailing by seven or more. That's the situation they find themselves in right now. More than seven points. Yeah, and that was the difference in the last game. Remember, the Panthers fumbled the opening kickoff. The Cowboys recovered it. They didn't score a touchdown, but they kicked a field goal, started up three to nothing, and the Panthers were never able to get the lead again. Now from the 22 yard line, up the middle, Troy Hambrick. You know, you talk to Bill Parcells and everybody congratulating Bill and what a marvelous job and all that. He never wants to hear congratulations un until he holds the Lombardi Trophy. You know, he has a coach's show. What he should do is call Larry David and say, can I borrow the name of your show from my show? Curb your enthusiasm. That's Bill Parcells. Right, and that's, that's what he says. You don't accept kudos. You're, you're not done until you're done. And he says, as a coach and as a player, you never admire your work. Second down and nine from the 23 yard line. Hambrick up to the 28 yard line. You know, and this is, this is a problem here for for Bill Parcells and and his team here is is his defense is really the strength. But then then when you get down, you're down 13 to nothing. Now at some point your offense has to take over, so you don't have a great running game. And then and then you have a quarterback who it's going to be on his shoulders right now you know, for the rest of this game it will probably be on Quincy Carter's shoulders to make some plays. If he does they have a chance if he doesn't then the Panthers are going to beat him. And as the Jones family looks on Carter is seven of 13 for only 53 yards short drop quick pass and it's Galloway who makes the catch and takes it up to the 47 yard line. So the corner gambled for the Panthers and Galloway able to make the catch spin away and turn it into an 18 yard game. Yeah that's the third or fourth time that's happened in this game where the where the corner here it's Reggie Howard you see he, he goes and he takes a bad angle there. I don't know that he could have done anything about that anyway but they take these little passes and make big plays out of them because of missed tackles and or bad angles by the defensive backs. Now from the 46 yard line. They send Glenn in motion. Deep drop by Carter this time. He steps up, fires on the run, gets his man Glenn. So he sent Glenn in motion left to right and brought him back all the way across the field. And the crowd is stilled for the moment on a 21 yard pickup. Right, and you're starting to feel that like Quincy Carter just got hit, didn't you? That he got the, that juice or pizzazz or whatever it is on, his, on these last two plays. I mean, here you, here you see Terry Glenn starts on the right side. He's running the crossing pattern. At some point, he's always going to be open. Quincy Carter had to scramble a little and then threw that ball perfectly on the run. Now 33-yard line, first down for the Cowboys. Back-to-back -back first downs on the last two plays. And Carter throws, and that one is incomplete. Intended for Jason Witt in the tight end with Mike Minter coming into the picture very rapidly second down you know and that was the thing that they did to him last time they completed 10 passes to the tight end and Jason Witten was a big part of that and I think he's going to continue to be a big part of this Cowboy offense but the Carolina Panthers came in and said that dink and duck that short stuff like they just threw to Witten they're not going to do that to him tonight. 
second and ten now. Hambrick and Anderson both in the backfield. Both can catch the ball. And there's a little shovel to Anderson. And Anderson gets to the 21-yard line. And another Dallas first down. That's a 13-yard game. Cowboys are getting some good play calling here. I mean, they got some good mixture. They know that, they, you, know, you know, that they have to get going now on offense. I mean, it looked like they were stuck in mud there for a while, and then they start making some moves here, pass the ball, pass the ball, shovel pass here to Richie Anderson, just just mixing them up. And now, now they put this Panther defense back on its heels a little. In effect, a long handoff. Bounces a reception for Richie Anderson, his first of the game. Now the ball is given to Hambrick. Hambrick tripped up as he gets out of the backfield at the 19-yard line by the middle linebacker, Dan Morgan, and Shane Burton as well. Who was the first guy that you ever knew that threw that shovel pass? You know who it was. <laughs> it was Lee Grosscup. He and, and Jack Curtis at Utah. That's where it came from, the Utah pass. Yeah, yeah. And, and then every time I see that pass, I swear I think Lee Grosscup. You have cup. to. And then people miscall it. They call it a shuffle pass. It's yeah, not a shuffle yeah, pass. Yeah. It's a shovel pass. Shovel pass, right. <laughs> Second down and eight from the 19 yard line. And Carter ducks and then can't get out of the way of Jenkins after Buckner almost sacked him. I'm not sure exactly what Chris Jenkins is doing, but he seems to be awfully proud of himself. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing, he is a big, powerful guy. And, and when he gets something, he causes more problems right at the line of scrimmage. But watch the jump that he's going to get here. And when that ball is snapped, he ends up back here. Watch him uncoil right there. And he's darn near to Quincy Carter before he gets out of there. That's why Bill Parcell said he's the best defensive tackle in football, Chris Jenkins is. And he said there's a big gap between him and the next one. Two-minute warning and third and long coming up. Al Michaels, John Madden, and Lisa Guerrero in Charlotte, North Carolina, where the Carolina Panthers are trying to win a trip to St. Louis. If they win, they play the Rams next week. If the Cowboys win, they play Philadelphia. And it's simple because the Cowboys are the sixth seed. They would have to play the highest seed, that's Philly. Carolina, the third seed, would play the lower seed, that's St. Louis. 16-3 Carolina with the Panthers to get the ball. In the third quarter, and Rod Smart takes it from the five. With turtle action. And up to the 31 yard line. Let's take a look at the first half numbers. The Panthers, 267 yards. This season, the Cowboys only once in a first half allowed more than 200 yards. That was in a Thanksgiving Day game dominated by Miami. It, Jake DeLong was pretty good in that first half. You know, 10 out of 19 for those 192 yards. And I think I think that kind of put the Cowboys defense back in their heels. They started off where they were doing a lot of blitzing early. Then towards the end of the half, they got away from the blitzing. Start on the ground. That's no game for Stephen Davis. We're talking about one of the ways to to loosen up that front so that a running back can get some yards. It's like this: get big plays in the passing game. Because then they say that if he blitz him and we go after him and he makes a play, then we'd better back off our blitzing. And then he's not going to get as much pressure, and he's going to make more plays like this where he has plenty of time. I mean, that's a, just a wide open. What happened is two guys went for the post, and no one went with Muhammad. Now Davis breaks some tackles. But not the final one. That's Ekuban, who knocks him down for a loss. And we were talking about Carolina's yardage in the first half. Coming into the game, of course, throughout the course of the regular season, those stats are now final. The Cowboys allowed 253.5 yards per game. So, in other words, they gave up more yards and a half than they allowed 
on an average game during the season. Yeah, and the offensive coordinator of the Panthers is Dan Henning, and I think he called a great first half. I mean, he worked for years with Bill Parcells and probably knows him as well as anyone. And I think that he really had great mixture of run and pass, short and deep in that first half. Third down and 11. A little swing pass out here. And the tackle is made in the open field on Stephen Davis as Terrence Newman came up and just got enough of him to trip him up. I know the Cowboys thought in that first game they had so much success with the Blitz, and then they didn't have any success in that first half. So they've gotten away from it, and I think they're going to play a lot less Blitz, a lot less pressure package this second half, or at least the start of the second half. Three and out for Carolina. Sauer on the punt. Joey Galloway back to return it. Galloway from the 22. Two yard return. It'll be first down up at the 24 yard line when the Cowboys get the ball for the first time here in the second half. Early third, Carolina 16, Dallas 3. Cowboy defense does its job. Three and out, and now the offense takes over at the 24 yard line. Early third quarter, Carolina leading by 13. Now at the end of the second half, you felt that Quincy Carter was starting to get a little juice or pizzazz or whatever it is, and I think he has to bring that second quarter with him right now. Under pressure, swings it. Ooh, that's dangerous. Very dangerous. They've been better served that he dropped it. The catch is made by Richie Anderson. The pressure was put on by Brenson Buckner, and that's an eight-yard loss. Yeah, and that's the thing that, that, that kills Bill Parcells about Quincy Carter. He says when he gets in trouble and he has to scramble and do, and do this and improvise, he'll make some bad decisions. Now, that one was complete for minus eight yards, but I'll guarantee you that was a bad, bad decision to throw that screen back across your body across the field. Second down and 18 from the 16-yard line. Anderson gets a couple of those back third down and long coming. You know, if you look at Quincy Carter's pass chart in the first half, you can kind of see what they have to do. You can see that you know here's the here's the here's the five yards, here's the 15 yards, and he's only thrown or tried two passes deeper than 15 yards and completed one of them. Somewhere along the line, and I'm not saying on this down, but somewhere along the line, they have to stretch this defense. Third and 15. And Carter slings it incomplete, broken up by Ricky Manning Jr., intended for Galloway. And so the rookie Manning out of UCLA, who had an interception last week, knocks that one away. Ricky Manning Jr. is on Joey Galloway here. And the thing about Ricky Manning Jr. is you see when Galloway goes down, he knows now that he can undercut it or jump it. He doesn't have to stand back there and guard it. So when he slips, then you always go for the ball. If he caught that, that was a touchdown. Open invitation when the guy's on the turf as Toby Goen gets ready to punt. So the Cowboys, like the Panthers, go three and out. And backing up and hauling it in at the 30, Steve Smith. Back to the 37 yard line. 11 minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the third. Manning very pleased with himself. Carolina very pleased with the outcome to this point. 16 3 Panthers. Carolina on top by 13. The big guns have they've been doing 194 yards for DeLong, 73 yards on the ground for Davis and Smith with those three catches, one of which went for 70 yards in the opening period. First down from the 37 yard line, DeLong floating one caught by Musin Mohammed, a wobbler, a floater, and it got there. 24 yards. I tell you, Jake DeLong has really taken advantage of these blitzes. The last time they blitzed, this time they they figure that they can do it again to put the pressure on DeLong. They come in a blitz. He just sits back there and, and finds a little gap there, a little hole, and puts it right into Masin Muhammad. 
That was a little wobbler, but I'll tell you, it was very, very accurate. I mean, there was a gap there between the two defenders. Muhammad got in that gap, and Galone got him the ball. Between Newman and Williams, and that's 100 receiving yards, 101, precisely for Muhammad. And that's almost intercepted. Darren Woodson. Second down and 10. The Dallas defense, we talked about them being number one in the league. You know, when you look at how they did this year, John, I mean, last year we, we talked about Tampa Bay as being one of the great defensive units ever. The Bucks gave up 4,044 yards. The Cowboys, 4,056. In other words, the Dallas Cowboy defense this year gave up only 12 more yards all season than one of the great defenses of all time. Yeah, right, and they played in a lot of those tight games. And we're talking to Bill Parcells last night about his defense. He said, our defense tonight has to create something. Smith out in the flat. And I think that's that's the thing. I mean, they're the number one defense, and they've been that. But when you get in a big game, you have to make big plays. And, and by creating things, he's talking about turnovers. I mean, maybe the defense gets one of the scores. And they even when they're playing defense here, the Cowboys, I think they're missing too many tackles. I think they're a little sloppy. I think they're getting gashed by their blitzes. And and they're not making anything happen. I mean, they're not they're not taking the ball away and that's what they have to do and Woodson is hurt he comes out Tony Dixon replaces him and the Dallas defense has yielded 73 yards to Davis on the ground and now both Smith and Muhammad are each in triple figures in yards receiving the long and making the catch for the touchdown is Steve Smith 32 yards as they go to work on New another blitz and that's who they're working on the rookie Terrence Newman he, he's a corner here he's a good player but Steve Smith is a good player too Steve Smith gets that step and then he stays inside enough so that Jake Malone can get the ball over his outside shoulder now what they're going to rule here is force out yep that's that's a signal there that's why force you, out, you can't have a challenge that's it's it's similar in a way to the play in which Arizona beat Minnesota last week. If you come down on your own account with one foot out of bounds, that is an out of bounds play. But this, with a force out being ruled, is not an out of bounds play. Casey for the point after. Hundred thirty five yards on five receptions for Smith and the Carolina Panthers are up by 20 in Charlotte. Last time the Panthers won a postseason game right here against Dallas following the 1996 season and right now on their way to perhaps their first playoff victory in those seven ensuing years as they fake a reverse and the ball is taken up to the 45 yard line by Michael Bates. Here yeah, we saw Jake Gallone throw that ball to Steve Smith. But watch what made it possible. Watch this, watch this group here and the protection that they've been given Jake Gallone all night. I mean that's that's where it starts. I mean the offensive line does a great job here where he can look and, and see Steve Smith step up and make a perfect throw. Look at the protection. They form a pocket. They give him a lane to throw it in and he and and Steve Smith did a good job. You know as you're running up you want to stay about four yards to the outside so that he has those four yards to throw the ball over your outside shoulder. Coleman Road right there the road on the 23rd of November. And the friendly confines on January 3rd from the 46 yard line on first down. Carter underneath, and that pass is incomplete. Dropped over the middle by Hambrick as he was hit by the middle linebacker Dan Morgan, who's a very good player. He's just been in and out of the lineup a lot because of injuries, the last of which was a concussion. There's the offensive line. We talked earlier about Kevin Donnelly, see him, number 65 there. They're really impressed with Jordan Gross. You know, he's a he's a rookie from Utah that that came in and has been a starter all the way. Never did look like a, a rookie. You know, had that right tackle spot and has played superbly. They had a 
hand on Carter's foot. The penetration was so good by Jenkins that as he handed the ball off to Anderson, he was going down in the process. Yeah, and that's exactly what Bill Parcells was talking about and saying why Chris Jenkins is so good because he's so big and powerful. I mean, he weighs he weighs 340 pounds, and John Fox was saying he's he moves like a 300 pound guy. <laughs> Usually, you know, you'd say that about a 200 pound guy. But he said Chris Jenkins moves like a 300 pound guy. They start in Honolulu last year. He was a reserve. Third down and six out of the shotgun. Going deep, coverage is very good and incomplete. Intended for Terry Glenn, who never had a chance. Ricky Manning hanging with him step for step. So John Fox, and it was funny yesterday, John, we're talking to both coaches. The, the same question is posed to each, to John Fox. What do you do? do you, what do you do differently? How do you coach any differently in post? He says, not at all. We do exactly what it took to get us here. To Parcells, oh, it's very different. No, it's, it's, it's a whole other game. Yeah, and Bill Parcells was talking about the deeper you go in, the more it changes. He said, this one's not as much different, but when you get to the divisional and the championship and you get to a Super Bowl, it's, it's a heck of a lot different. Fair catch made by Steve Smith at the 15-yard line. The Panthers will take over there with 8.38 to play. In the third, Carolina 23 and the Dallas Cowboys 3. This NFC wildcard game is being brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Friendly nonstop service all across the country. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of freedom. Aflac, ask about it at work. Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. And Nissan who invites you to shift the way you move through the world. Bud Light providing the aerial coverage above downtown Charlotte. And right at the edge of downtown, Darren Woodson is back in the game at safety for the Cowboys. Panthers begin from the 15-yard line and give it to Stephen Davis. 17th carry of the night, 73 yards, and let's check in with Lisa. Well, the Panthers wide receiver Musan Muhammad left the game. He has a hip contusion. He was taken into the locker room, but they say his return is probable, Al. And he's had a big night as you look at the numbers there. Four catches for 101 yards, and Steve Smith, five catches for 135. Ricky Prohl, meanwhile, comes in while Muhammad's gone. Jake DeLone was saying the other day that, you know, that he really loves when Ricky Prohl's in there. In fact, he called him his security blanket, which kind of surprised me. Second and ten. And it pops loose, six-yard game. He's probably been watching him on television since he was about 12. <laughs> <laughs> because you think, you know, Masama Muhammad, you know, and what he does, and then Ricky Prohl, and, and he, has, he has quite a few of them. Talking about hat to hat, and mm -hmm. there's a hat flopping on the ground. And that was Roy Williams' hat, and Roy Williams for the moment is going back to the bench. There is the strong safety. They'll be third down and three now. They could get cut from the 22-yard line. Davis forced out of bounds. And a little misdirection as Al Singleton is right there, very close to a first down. Well, that's right on the yellow line, isn't it? Right there. It's right on that lollipop, too. Isn't what they call that thing a lollipop? I've never heard that. Yeah, I think so. I think they call that, you see how it's built? It looks like a lollipop. The little mat? Yeah, yeah, this thing right here they call a lollipop. That thing right there. What do you call that on the, on the ground there? Where? The, uh, the little, like, carpet. It's a first down. Yeah, by about two chain lengths. Stephen Davis, great acquisition. And he's from South Carolina, so in effect he's coming home. His numbers for the season. You know, you say Carolina, we were talking about this yesterday. One of the reasons that the Panthers, of course, have been kind of under the radar over the past few years. They haven't been very good. I mean, they haven't been to the postseason in, in seven years. They're an expansion team, so you don't have a great history as the ball is sent back to Foster. And then they used to, they used to 
name teams after after states. I think the Minnesota Twins were the first and the Minnesota Vikings and you kind of understood that's the Twin Cities. But he, this is a team not a, not named after a state. It's named after a region. Of course if you live in this area this is known as the Carolinas but around the country everybody goes what who where yeah, but what, the, Carolinas, the Carolinas are what North, north and, south? and south Carolina yeah so Carolina could be north or south but it's north it's, a, it's amazing we both live out west how many people in, is it in Charlotte is it in Greensboro is it in Raleigh is it in South Carolina the guy with the binoculars <laughs> yes, he, he started does. the whole thing here and that's Foster taken down again and then of course there's another team Carolina the Hurricanes in the National Hockey League but they play in Raleigh yeah, that makes sense to me <laughs> They were talking about Jordan Gross and the and the job that he does the right tackle. He's going to get beat on this one by Greg Ellis. You see him. He comes in and, and he gets his nose over his toes. He extends a little too much and Ellis being the veteran he and just it just kind of waits takes him on pushes him off and comes in and makes the play. But Jordan Gross for the most part has really done a good job on Greg Ellis tonight. Now Mohammed's back in the game. After he went back to the locker room they keep it on the ground. And this is Foster again. Oh, a tough crowd to please, huh? Up by 20 and booing. Well, you know, it's that old third down thing. And 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 Dan Henning, the offensive coordinator, said, he said, you know, in this game, he said, I'll guarantee you there's going to be some situations where we don't want to force anything. I don't want Jake DeLome to have to make a, a play and maybe make a bad one. He said, we are going to get booed on some of our third down calls. He was prophetic. There it was. Todd Sauerbrunn on the punt. Beautiful deep Pro Bowl type kick. Fielded at the 22 by Joey Galloway. Oops. And Galloway gets hit just as he gets out of bounds. Up at the 27 yard line. So the Cowboys have to start to catch fire because they're down by 20 with 435 left in the third. 20 point lead and when you're playing on the road how often can you overcome that in postseason history. Well Detroit at San Francisco you go back to 57 when the 49ers had a 27 to 7 lead and the Lions won the game. And that's the mountain facing the Cowboys right now as they begin this drive. And that pass is incomplete. Good coverage by the linebacker right there. Greg Favors. And a flag is down. And that's news. There's only been one penalty assessed in this game against Dallas. And it was a one-yard penalty in the end zone. And that was the thing we were talking about the other day. That historically, there's always been fewer penalties called in the playoffs. And once you get to the playoffs, they kind of let them play. And they had had all-star crews up until this year. This year, the whole crew goes to the playoffs. 88. Offense. Ten yard penalty. Still first down. Antonio Bryant. In fact, old Mr. Univac, Steve Hurt, figured out that there's 18% fewer penalties in postseason play over the past several yeah, seasons. I think, I mean, I think a couple reasons for that. I think, you know, the the crews were all-star crews and they didn't work together. I think the teams are the good team. And I think they're the good teams because they play the game better. First and twenty. Richie Anderson and, and, and maybe the concentration level is better because you know how much is at stake right that every every play is a big play Sam Mills the former linebacker with New Orleans and you remember him a fire hydrant and Sam with intestinal cancer and he's been battling it with radiation with chemo he's been with the, the Panthers all season long he can't work seven days a week he came here to end his playing career is a terrific guy and uh, we're all wishing him the very best. I saw him at practice the other day and, and, and I mean he, he does a full normal schedule. He has chemo like on Monday takes Tuesday off and then he's here the rest of the week and John Fox had him talk to the team on Friday mm -hmm. and he said that this guy I mean he was a great player. Sam Mills was a great player. You know he, I mean you'd say he was undersized but he was undersized great tough guy you know and I, I think the players feed off that and Sam Mills is a, a real inspiration I mean, he's a linebackers coach but he's an inspiration not only this the linebackers the whole defense this whole Carolina Panther team played under Jim Mora with the Saints and went to five Pro Bowls 
third and 19. Carter almost has that picked up. Double coverage on Galloway and Ricky Manning almost had an interception. Fourth down, here's Lisa. Thanks, Al. Now, as John mentioned, John Fox did ask Sam Mills to talk to the team yesterday following practice, and it was the first time Mills actually addressed his cancer to the entire team as a unit. It was a very, very somber, somber meeting, as you can imagine. Uh, the remark that left the biggest impression to the players and the coaches that I talked to was as follows. In football and in life, you need a team to be successful. I need a team of doctors, nurses, and specialists to battle this. I can give in, I can give up, or I can keep fighting. I choose to keep fighting. And fighting the good fight as Golan's punt is run back uh, parallel to the 40 yard line. 44 yard kick and a two yard return here with three minutes and 28 seconds remaining in the third quarter. It was a Cowboys six three and out. I mean, they, it's just. This Panther defense has really shut them down. I mean, they don't give them anything. I mean, they try and run. There's nothing there. They go to the pass. They have everything covered. You know, you say you ought to, you know, try and stretch them, get deep. They don't have a lot of time. And and this Panther defense has just put a blanket on this Cowboy offense. You saw that sign, which also acknowledged Mark Fields as the pass is caught by Hoover. And just to finish that story, Fields, a very good player for the Panthers. With Hodgkin's disease, so he's been battling that this year, and they hope to have him back next year. And again, another inspiration on this team. And as John Fox was saying, you know, the loss of of Mark Fields, he was their blitzer, and you know, and he was the guy that if they were going to bring pressure, he would be the rush guy. And they lost him, and he said, he said we lost him, we lost a you know a big part of our team because. We could never replace him as a rusher or blitzer, and that part of our defense has suffered. Second and three now from the 47 yard line. Third quarter winding down, little pitch back to Davis. And he gets taken down from behind the 42 yard line by that win. <laughs> His coach right there to say, ah, beautiful, baby, beautiful. Yeah, that's that old option thing, you know, where you fake one way and pitch back the other way. See, so you're going to. Fake in here and then pitch like an option. I mean, the quarterback doesn't come running down the line like in college, but that's the the professional version of the option play. We're talking about Masin Muhammad, you know, and the type of blocker he was, and we're talking about Stephen Davis saying every time I get a big run, Muhammad will make a block for me. You just saw it right there. Took Mario Edwards halfway to Gastonia, first and ten at the 42-yard line. Davis on a toss again to the other side. Picks up about five, tackled by Newman. You know, it was interesting the other day. I was talking to Dan Henning, and he says, "You know how in, in horse races, when a guy wins a race, the jockey always says, you know, I knew coming down the stretch that I had a lot of horse left." He said, "He said I feel that way about Stephen Davis." He said, "We're coming down the stretch," and he said, "When you get in the playoffs, you have to have a lot of horse left." And he said, "I think of Stephen Davis. I have a lot of horse left." He was right. That's a great feeling for a jockey and a coach. Well, you know, you know, I mean, he went back to the Washington Redskins. And he was talking about John Riggins, you know, down the stretch and what John Riggins would do. Down the stretch they come. And this is Lucin Mohammed picking up the first down. Meanwhile, Davis has now gained 99 yards. Crowd saluting Lucin Mohammed, who, along with Casey, are the only two Panthers remaining from their last playoff run in 96. Again, again, Jake Gallone about the second quarter got very comfortable. Muhammad, you know, has been very physical out here, blocking, catching passes, getting first downs the whole game. And he has Steve Smith and the speed on the other side. And he has Stephen Davis. They've had great mixture in this game. First and ten of the 29 yard line. Half a minute to go in the third period. And they give it to Deshaun Foster. As Davis gets a breather and Carolina can let that clock tick all the way down to the beginning of the fourth quarter. You know, I was watching the pregame warm up, Allen, and Jerry Richardson, the owner, was out there working with the offensive line in the pregame warm up. He must have showed him something because they've done a heck of a job. It's like a mom and pop store. <laughs> End of the third quarter, it's Carolina 23, Dallas 3 in this wild card game from Charlotte. 
will continue after this message from our ABC stations. Back in Charlotte, Al Michaels, John Madden, and Lisa Guerrero as we start the fourth quarter, and the Carolina Panthers are on top 23 to 3. So Bill Parcells out of retirement, back in the playoffs, coaching his 18th game. John Fox is first, and Fox's group up by 20. And the pass is caught by Deshaun Foster. He takes it to the 14 yard line. For Parcells, I talked to Jerry Jones last night, and I asked Jerry. When's the first time it came into your mind that Bill Parcells could be the coach of the Dallas Cowboys? We had uh, uh, played the Giants in New York, and uh, uh, I had uh, stayed over the morning of the for the next morning, and I got a call from a friend of his that said, uh, "Jerry, uh, there's a possibility that Bill could have an interest in uh, the Cowboys' job," and uh, I told him I would give him a call went back to Dallas and by the time I landed had him on the phone. Now what happened was Parcells was working for ESPN last year on a Sunday he's sitting in the green room and they're watching television and he's got his representative Jimmy Sexton there and Chris Mortensen the outstanding reporter from ESPN and Jerry Jones's picture winds up on a monitor and Parcells looks up at the screen and he says you know I could work for that guy. And then Chris goes down to interview Jerry about Emmett Smith a couple of days later and mentions that. And that led to Jones and Parcells getting together, and here they are. Second down and 10 at the 14-yard line. Little swing pass out to Foster. And I always wondered, John, whether it was Jerry coming up with the idea and nibbling and putting out feelers, or whether it was Bill, and it was Bill. Yeah, and but you know, Bill is one of those guys that you kind of knew was coming back because remember there was also talk that he was going to go to Tampa Bay and then he was in and out and in and out. In fact, Dan Henning told me he was in and out of Tampa Bay five times. So you kind of knew that the thing was there. And then when he saw Jerry Jones and said, you know, I think I could work for that guy, I felt that he could too. You know, like five years ago, mm -hmm. probably not, either side. Right now, I mean, they've proved that they can. Each in their early 60s, this is the shot to get back to glory. And we'll, we'll rack it up in a, in a little while, and we'll play for you. Because I asked Jerry also last night, you know, why Dallas? If Bill was going to come back, what about the Cowboys? And we'll get that on tape for you in a little while. Very interesting answer. So it's fourth down now, and a 33-yard, make a 32-yard field goal attempt coming up. For John Casey. You ever seen that before where the, the holder had to put his glove on just, just before he held? <laughs> then if you explain that the holder is also the punter, you said, oh yeah. Holding gloves. And Casey bangs it through. That's four for Casey tonight. And the Panthers are up 26 to 3. Flozell Adams and the Cowboy offense ready to go back out on the field, but in this half, zero, nothing, total yardage. The Panthers in this half have outscored the Cowboys 10-0, lead 26-3. And this is Michael Bates. Bates to midfield before he's forced out of bounds by the kicker, John Casey. So I mentioned before we were talking to Jones last night and I said well if Parcells was going to come back into coaching why the Cowboys. He talked about the Cowboys as a franchise and uh, he basically said look if we were in Las Vegas there's the lounge and then there's the great showroom where Sinatra and Presley were. The Cowboys are the big showroom and that's where I want to be on stage. <laughs> the big showroom, huh? It is the big showroom. The Dallas Cowboys play in the big showroom. Carter to the 42-yard line to Galloway. You know the old trick I think the Panthers pulled on the Cowboys is wearing the white jerseys. You know, you talk about the big show and the Cowboys, and you always think of them and their white jerseys. Well, the home team gets a choice. 
And so the Panthers sometimes they wear dark here at home but they did it the last time they played in the playoffs too. They made the Cowboys and I, I remember years ago the Redskins used to do it and every mm -hmm. team in the NFC the Eagles would try and do it make the Cowboys wear their blue uniforms because they don't look like the Cowboys in these uniforms do they. Haberdasher is gamesmanship. Whatever the hell that means. Second and six. <laughs> Here's Carter. Caught by Richie Anderson, and he stopped a couple of yards shy of the first down by Greg Fakers. Yeah, you're talking about Flozell Adams and you know going out there in the field. I'll say this that that the Panthers have controlled the line of scrimmage both sides. Their offensive line has dominated the defensive line of the Cowboys and their defensive line has dominated the offensive line of the Cowboys. This is where it all starts. And the total yardage tonight is almost three to one. Third and two. They get the first down here. Richie Anderson takes the ball to the 35 yard line. Yeah, that's a that's a tough thing when Richie Anderson is your best running back. That's not a good thing. I was looking up the stats and and he's played for 11 years and in those 11 years he's gained just over a thousand yards. So that means that you know, he's never been. I mean Richie Anderson what he is is he's a pass receiving fullback. That's what he is. As a team in receptions that by the way is Dallas's first first down of the half. That's Witten, the tight end, tackled by Mike Minter. You know, and that's what that's what Quincy Carter did in the first game. In the first game, is that is that short stuff? You know, you know, he hit the tight end, he hit the fullback, but the Panthers didn't give him that in this game. And he has only nine yards in the air in this half. Like the Panthers haven't given him much of anything, have they? No. Outstanding performance by Carolina. Never in jeopardy tonight. Second and one. And the pass is caught there by Terry Glenn. So it looks at the moment, barring a stunning comeback here, the Panthers can pack up and get ready to go to St. Louis and play inside on artificial turf next week. And then the Green Bay Seattle winner would wind up going to Philadelphia. You know, and that's what makes these games so big. I mean, the winners get to go on and play, and so devastating for the losers. I mean, you go through the whole season, and you're going to go home, and this is going to be your last game. You won't play again until next year. Carter on first down and ten. It's caught at the 15-yard line by Anderson. When a three-team meets a six, as the case is here, you always know where the winner goes. But when four meets five, you don't know until the next day. For instance. Tennessee is number five. They beat Baltimore four. But Tennessee could wind up at either New England or Kansas City. And there is the NFC. You've got five against four. Seahawks, Packers, this game 6 3. So they have to wait until tomorrow's Denver Indy game to determine where the winner of that game goes and where Tennessee goes. Second down and six from the 14 yard line. Shovel, Anderson. To the 11. I'll tell you that's one thing if it's the if it's the Panthers the the, the Rams are going to have to think about these same things is controlling that defensive line and like I said earlier the best defensive line in the playoffs and the pass rush and you know and get some running game going protecting Bulger because this this group here can get after you doing it all season long third down and three now. I'd like to take that 77 with me if I were starting something. Yeah. I don't know what I'd be starting, but I'd want him on my side. He's got some good playmates along that front, too. Hamburg. Fighting for a first. Jenkins will go to the Pro Bowl. That's Minter coming in. And remember, those playmates include Mike Rucker with 12 sacks. Buckner, longtime uh, former Steeler in his 10th year and solid. And, of course, the number two pick in the draft two years ago in Julius Peppers. Yeah, you know, and that's what they have is Chris Jenkins, you know, he can get that penetration inside and flush it. Then they have Julius Peppers with the speed to go catch it. So they could even play a running quarterback. Fourth and one, of course, the Cowboys have to go for it. And Carter's going to take a timeout. 
Timeout Dallas. They're frenzied at Erickson Stadium. 26 3, Carolina. Final game in the Bowl Championship Series. Tomorrow, the Nokia Sugar Bowl from the Superdome in New Orleans. Number one, Oklahoma. Jason White, Heisman winner. Number two, LSU. Eight Eastern, five Pacific. Right here on ABC Sports. Look at this place. They're going fourth and one. They're going nuts here. Woo. Last gasp for Dallas. And Carter's going to run it. And run it into the end zone. Touchdown, Quincy Carter. And so the Cowboys still breathing. Nine yards on fourth down. This isn't a bad call down here. You know, we, we, because you have the option. He's going he's gonna to run a bootleg. You see, he fakes here. Now he comes out here with an option. And the option is to pass the ball right there or to run it for the first down. And the coverage was pretty good. So if the coverage is pretty good, then they're going to give you some room to run the ball. Dan Campbell on that one got a good block. Billy Cundiff will try to make it a 16 point or two possession game. And that makes it 26 to 10. Seven thirty six left in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Hi, I'm Stephen Davis, and this is my wild card Saturday night. You must be able to get wild. Get wild. If you wanna get real freaking out the time to try. Come on, do it. Stephen Davis doesn't love Dallas. He played against them several times, of course, as a Washington Redskin. And it has been a long time since he has been on the winning side. Steve Smith from the six yard line up to the 17. That was a good move there, you know, because you say, should they onside kick or not? I didn't think they should, but what you like to do is get the Panthers in an onside prevent and then kick the ball normally to him, then they don't have a return, and that's exactly what happened there. And then he two scores here, so what they really need is a three and out, going for the touchdown, then you, in all likelihood, see the onside kick, of course, depending on how much time is left. But we were talking about Stephen Davis as a Redskin. He has lost his last 11 games against the Cowboys, including the one in November as a Panther. So 10 as a Redskin, one as a Panther. I think what the Cowboy defense has to be thinking here is turnover. Get the ball, get the ball, rip it out of there. Here's Davis. Ricky Prohl has an even longer personal losing streak. Prohl, who has bounced around. Ricky's lost his last 12 in a row. There it is. Longest personal losing streak against one opponent. Roman Pfeiffer has lost 16 straight to the 49ers doesn't matter where he winds up Prohl and Davis are right there Trapp well, and Wilkinson. Well Prohl got all his when he was down there with Arizona. Right. And of course Stephen Davis got all his when he's with the Redskins. Most of Pfeiffer of course with the Rams. Second down and 10 from the 16 yard line. Davis picking and threading up to the 19 and now a very important stop coming up here for the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, that's what the Cowboys are saying. I mean, the first thing they want to think is to stop them. Don't let them get the first down, but then they're thinking turnover. You know, rip the ball out of there. Get, but the Panthers are thinking the same thing. You know, we're not going to put it out there. We're going to be safe, and we're doing these kinds of things. And the way these plays have been going, I wouldn't be surprised if they ran the ball on third down here and just punt it. Steven Davis now over 100. 24 carries for 103. Third and six. Golom milking the play clock. The snap at one. They keep it on the ground, and the Cowboys do get the stop that they need as Davis makes the stop at the 21 yard line. And the Cowboys are going to take a timeout. 
Why not Dallas 555 left in the fourth. Two of the wild card games tomorrow and thus Sunday NFL countdown gets you started on ESPN at 11 o'clock Eastern time. Tomorrow's games are Seattle and Green Bay and Denver and Indianapolis and then I'll wrap up the wild card round and this tournament which started with 12 teams will get down to the Elite Eight. After Dallas uses a timeout, which I thought was a little too early for a second timeout, they have one remaining plus the two minute warning, and they need two scores and two two point conversions. And Sauerbrunn's tech is a beauty. 24 yard line, Joey Galloway brings it up to the 34 yard line, and so 66 yards. From the end zone right now, 5:43 remaining in the fourth quarter, and they've got to get in twice and convert twice. And Joey Galloway had to get down on that one because there was a there was a punt block, and anytime you go all out to to block the punt, that means that you have no return on the other end. So you either go for the block or you go for the return. If you don't get the block, you're not going to get much of a return. Almost the equivalent of a special teams blitz. That's, that's exactly what it is. And if they hit one on you, it's a big one. You know, if they if they block the punt, I mean that's that's what they were doing. They had to sell out because the Cowboys are desperate. You know, I mean they need a big play on offense. Now they needed it on defense. They needed a takeaway. They needed a, a block punt. One of those kinds of things. Cowboys spreading it out on first down from the 34-yard line. Over the middle, pass caught, nine-yard gain. Galloway goes down. And they'll mark it at the 42, 43 yard line, second and a long one. Now Quincy Carter does that well. He throws those slants, those curls, those hooks, those deep ends, anything inside the numbers, he throws very well. I think anything outside the numbers, like the outs and the comebacks and corners, I think he's a little late on. He doesn't throw those as accurately or as well. Second down and one from the 43 yard line. Here comes the blitz. They get off a screen. Turns out to be an interception by Julius Peppers. And Peppers takes it all the way inside the 15 yard line. The blitz was on. Terry Cousin came uncontested from the corner. Carter had to get rid of it in a hurry. And Julius Peppers has just about cemented it. They, it was a middle screen, and you're going to see Cousin. He's going to come. He's going to come from the outside, as you said, uncontested right there. Julius Peppers is dropping back, and he sees pass, and he's just going to pick this thing off. You see him? He's coming back there. He's he's. It's, it's kind of a zone dog. So they're pressuring from run, from the right side. He's on the left side. He's dropping off, playing pass. Watch him. He's right here. You see him drop, 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 and then he's playing for that screen middle or spying anything. Perfect call. From the 11 yard line, Davis fell down, gets up, takes the handoff, and now they'll just use the clock. That's Pepper's second interception, and this is second season. The other one, last year, against Dallas, off Carter. You know, and the thing is, you say, you know, you know, why do you drop those defensive lines back, on, you know, on those, on those zone dogs, those big defensive linemen? They can't do anything back there. That's stupid. If you have a guy like Julius Peppers, it's pretty smart. In fact, he was a basketball player for a couple yeah. years at North Carolina, wasn't it? He stayed in state. Played in the Final Four. You can play in North Carolina. You're a pretty good basketball player. Second and ten from the 11. And the long gets taken down. You know what they call the long? With what Stephen Davis calls him? No. Bobby Boucher. <laughs> from from Waterloo. <laughs> That's his nickname. <laughs> he said he gets in the huddle and he gets so excited he's calling plays and you can't understand him. You don't know what the heck he's saying. But if he's going well, <laughs> you just listen and do it with what you think he meant. There's a water boy right there. Adam Sandler right there. Well, DeLoma saying, I want a timeout just before the clock expires here, and they get it with a third down and 10 coming up. So, timeout taken by Carolina with a 16 point lead in the fourth quarter. 
in Charlotte. Great year nonetheless for that man. Twenty six ten the Carolina Panthers leading it with three twenty six remaining in the fourth quarter. Quincy Carter's had a struggle to say the least. Third and ten from the eleven yard line after the timeout. And that Panther defense put the struggle on him. Mm -hmm. Out in the flat. Jermaine Wiggins taken down by Coakley. Dallas is now going to take a timeout because they know Carolina will attempt a field goal and just trying to conserve time on the other side of the timeout. The game recap tonight. Go back to the first quarter when it was Smith catching the pass near the sideline on third and short taking all the way down to the one but a good goal line stand by Dallas forced the Panthers to settle for three then Stephen Davis scored the first touchdown of the game on a third down call ten yards on the ground Lucien Mohammed with this play right here fumbling near the end of the first half recovering setting up that field goal to make it 16 to three and Carolina scoring Another touchdown on that grab by Smith in the corner on the force out. It's 26 to 10, and the Panthers with 382 yards against the league's number one defense. Moose and Muhammad and uh, Steve Smith and Stephen Davis were about 90 percent of this offense tonight. I mean, it seemed like it was, it was either Stephen Davis was running the ball or Smith and Muhammad were catching the ball. Casey trying to kick his fifth field goal from 34 yards out. And he has it. That ties an NFL postseason record with five field goals in one game. So he has accounted for 15 of the 29 points, and it's a 19 point Carolina advantage. Yeah, we talked about the receivers, and, and let's just look at what they've done tonight. We know that the offensive line gave them protection, and Jake Malone got him the ball, but Muhammad is a, is a very, very physical guy, and you can see the, the physicality, if that's a word. And then, you know, he, he just uses that big body, and you better be ready to tackle. And then, of course, this guy here, Steve Smith, he just has great speed. And he's an explosive player. And anytime you get him out there, you can hit him with a short one and let him make a long run, or you can throw him the deep one. They, they've had, you know, you know, great movement tonight. I mean, using Muhammad, using Smith, you know, and then mixing in the run. I think that Dan Henning has called a great game tonight for the Panthers. And the St. Louis Rams right now, their staff can begin to concentrate on these guys. See Steve Smith over there, you know that, that speed kills. When you can get some speed in there, that changes everything about a defense. At the one yard line, Michael Bates. Up to the 26 yard line. This wild card game from Charlotte is being brought to you by Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh. Budweiser, it's game time. Ford, if you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. And Circuit City, we're with you. Bud Light providing the aerial coverage as you look down into Erickson Stadium. Charlotte NC. First down, Dallas in the 26 yard line. Galloway, the intended receiver. One thing about home field advantage in the NFL, it is really a big advantage. Look at that in, in baseball since 1990. The difference is minus 18 percentage points. In the National Hockey League, it's minus three from the regular season to post. The NBA it becomes more significant and in the National Football League it is very significant because regular season games are won by home teams 59 percent of the time and almost three out of four by home teams in postseason play. Anderson upended. 
Yeah, that's right, and that's the thing that makes everything good about the the NFL is that is that you have to earn earn it, you know, to get to play home field, and you earn it by having the best regular season. So if you were the better team in the regular season, you know, you have more of a chance to win in the playoff game. And that's the way the seedings are supposed to work. Of course, in football, it's a little different than in the other sports because the other sports are normally a best of seven. This is one game. Yeah, and and that doesn't. I mean, the field has never won a game, and John Gruden, who was in the studio in the pregame and halftime, knows that very well. I mean, the Eagles had the home field for the championship game last year, and the Buccaneers go out and beat them, go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, after the Eagles got off to a great start, led seven nothing early on. Final game of the event meant nothing. Jason Witten for the first down. First round games, home team since 1990. 38 and 15. The second round is really where it's significant because that's when the wild card goes to either the first or second seed. And this, the first or second seed is home. They've had a week off. The other team has had to go through the wild card round. And then the conference championship games, it starts to narrow again. And that's a big thing, I think, because the the in the divisional, you know, they have it a bye, so they've had the week off. Final play before the two minute warning is a pass completion to Anderson, but for not much. 157 remaining. And they can begin to celebrate in Charlotte into the night as their Panthers are ready to advance to round two. Carolina on top 29 10. Coaches talk about balanced attacks. So here we are trying to figure out who winds up on the horse trail. We got some candidates. You've got the quarterback, you've got the running back, you've got two receivers. I mean, the defense has done a nice job. You know, we could put a coach up there, you might put Fox up there. We've got a lot of guys to think about, John. Yeah, I think I think the whole thing, Jake DeLome had to play big tonight. And you know, they weren't going to be able just to do it with the running game because the Cowboys could you know stack up on that and they they did they were going to take Stephen Davis away and they were going to make Jake DeLone beat him that was their game plan you know don't let Davis beat us you know you know make Jake DeLone do it put it in his hands they put it in his hands and he beat him with a 104.5 rating and then you've got John Casey and he's not going to wind up on the trailer but he's tied an NFL record with five field goals tonight. And Fox, you talk about a coaching staff preparing a team for a game. The only penalties tonight against Carolina, zero. You know, and they played that kind of game too. I mean, it was, it, it, you know, it, it's close to a perfect game. Second and ten, Carter to the 45-yard line. And I think that Dallas, you know, knows that, you know, that they kind of overachieved this year, and Bill Parcells did a great job with them and everything. But there's still a few players short, and he knows it. We'll look along the offensive line. Quincy Carter. I mean, he had a, a good enough year to get into the playoffs. They do need a running back as well because Bill said I've got to upgrade in that area. But the one thing about Parcells, as Al Wallace gets the sack. Is that Bill said he, I said do you think you'll fill out the four year contract and he said if I feel the way I do now absolutely he said I, I'm already thinking about next year with great anticipation I feel great I'm happy to be back doing it not, he, he's not feeling as good as he did like last night but but I think he's got a pretty good chance of fulfilling that John right and that's that's how you tell when you're through is when you can't think about the future and if you can't think and talk about the future you're going to be part of the future and and their season is over and and the Panthers are going on. I mean this this is big. I've been in playoff games and and one and there's no better feeling than than winning a playoff game and and going on and there's no worse feeling than losing a playoff game because it's your last game and you have to live with it for six months and for John Fox what a what a job. To take a team that was one in 15 two years ago, and remember that one was a stunning opening day upset against the Vikings. They had one more play, <laughs> but he lost 15 in a row, and only one team in the history of the NFL has won a postseason game with no penalties, no turnovers. One of the great Steeler teams against Dallas in Super Bowl 10. 
That's the way to play football. No turnovers, no penalties, and dominate the line of scrimmage both offensively and defensively. So the Panthers began the season with five straight wins, ended the regular season with three straight wins, come in hot, stay hot, and go to St. Louis. And for Bill Parcells, a magnificent job with a team that was 5-11 and 11 over the last three years. The Cowboys are back, but the Panthers are going on. Final score, Carolina 29, Dallas 10. And coming up next from Charlotte, we'll have the Auto Trader. .com postgame show.